Welcome back everyone to another video. I want to ask you to please like and share this video if you enjoy the work I do. This helps others to find my work. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Remember to click the little notification bell so you can be notified when I upload my next video. Ancient Japanese warriors are known for their honor and bravery. They have created legends which have captured the imagination of people for centuries. They are the focus of movies, books, and cartoons. But where did this culture of warriors come from? And how did it all start? Well, let's travel back to ancient Japan and learn about the first shogun, and then the samurai who came after. The year is 758 AD, and a young child, Sakanoye Tamaruma Mara, was born in Japan. Now, not much is known about his early life, but we do know that his first military mission was June 794 AD, and he was tasked with conquering the Emishi people. He conquered and subjugated the Amishi people with no problem. And the battle that he fought in with them did not last very long. It's noted by General Oumtomo, which was reported on October 28th, that they, quote, killed 457 men, caught 150, got 85 horses, and burned 75 palaces. The Amishi entered this battle with only a force of less than 2,000 warriors, so they did not stand a chance against the great warrior Sakanoye. Now, Sakanoye's success in this raid earned him great honors. He was appointed supervisory delegate of Mishinoku and Ideha and governor of Mishinohu on January 25th. 796. He was eventually appointed to General of Peace Guard and then his ultimate honor, Seita Shogun, in 797. Sakanoye is the first person to be honored with the title of Shogun in Japan. Now, on February 24th, 801, he campaigned in northern Japan, and he established fortresses at Izawa and Shiwa. And during this campaign, his goal was to target and get rid of the Ainu people, who were the native people of the region. And he effectively conquered and subjugated the Ainu in that area. The campaign against the Ainu people was a long campaign that went far beyond Sakanoyu's life. Basically, the Ainu were pushed north until they were forced almost completely out of their own territory. Now, the emperor at this time was Emperor Kanmu. He was the 50th emperor, and during his reign, he moved the capital of Japan to Hain Kyo, which is now present-day Kyoto, and Hain means peace. Now, after Emperor Kanmu's death, Sakanoye went on to serve Emperor Heise and Emperor Saga. In 810, he helped suppress an attempt to restore the retired Emperor Heise to the throne. And in 811, he was appointed great counselor and minister of war. He died on June 17, 811, at the age of 54. And Sakanoye's tomb is located in the village of Kurisu, near Kyoto. He was the first to be given the title Shogun. In fact, the historian James Murdoch said of Sakanoye, quote, 
in a sense the originator of what was subsequently to develop into the renowned samurai class. He provided in his own person a worthy model for the professional warrior on which to fashion himself and his character. In battle, a veritable war god. In peace, the gentlest of manly gentlemen and the simplest and unassuming men. And anthropologist Alexander Francis Chamberlain said, quote, And we can cross the whole of Asia and find the Negro again, for when in a far-off Japan the ancestors of the modern Japanese were making their way northward against the Ainu, the aborigines of that country, the leader of their armies was Sakanoye Tamarimara, a famous general and a Negro. And lastly, W.E.B. Du Bois included Sakanayu Tamarimaro in the list of most distinguished black rulers and warriors in antiquity in his writing, The Negro. Black people in Japan was not new back at that time. It dated farther back than that. As a matter of fact, it is believed to be as early as 300 AD that Africans were noted in Japan. But this is not taking into account the early migrations out of Africa and the, the settling of the first peoples. Now the samurai emerged during the Heian period after the Shogun, which was a short-lived title. And the rise of the samurai occurred under the Shogun rule and they reached their height around 1185 to 1333 AD. As the samurai rose in power, they became a mighty military force. And one of the most popular samurai that is known today is Yasuke. On March 23, 1581, an African man named Yasuke arrived in Kyoto, Japan. Kyoto was the capital city of Japan at that time, and it was home to one of the most powerful daimyos, also known as feudal lords. His name was Oda Nobunaga. Nobunaga had one main mission and that was to unify all of Japan. At this time, Japan was divided by several warlords who were constantly battling. What occurred was that after the fall of the last dynasty, there was no distinct leader or emperor and the country was split up among warlords who were vying for power. Now, Yasuke was born around the 1550s in either Ethiopia, Mozambique, or South Sudan. Not much is known about his life, but there is much speculation. Some say maybe he was a slave or a servant, but it is written that there is no information that confirms that he was ever anyone's slave or servant or that he wasn't. All we know is that he traveled to Japan with an Italian, Italian Jesuit missionary named Alessandro Balagano as his bodyguard. When the pair arrived in Kyoto, they met with Nabunaga and Yasuke quickly drew his interest. Now there were other Africans in Japan in the 16th century. Several hundred lived there and they worked as interpreters, soldiers, entertainers, and much more. But Yasuke drew a lot of attention. It is said that crowds gathered to see him, that when he was in the temple, um, there was a collapse of part of a building with the crowds gathering and climbing on just to see him. Now I didn't find any of that in writing. Those are all just rumored occurrences so I can't confirm if those events actually occurred. 
But what we do know is that Yasuke's encounter with Nobunaga was recorded by a few people who were present at the time. One was written in a letter from 1581 from the Jesuit Louis Fra to a Loronco Mexia. Louis Fra also traveled to Japan, but we don't know if he traveled with Yasuke and Valagano or if he was already a priest there at their at their temple. But he wrote that Nabunaga thought Yasu Yasuke was covered in ink because of his black skin. So he had him stripped from the waist up and made him scrub his skin. After seeing that his skin truly was black, Nobunaga took even more interest in him. He even had his nephew give Yasuke a sum of money at their first meeting. Now, as described in Lord Nobunaga Chronicles, he wrote, quote, on the 23rd of the second month, a black page came from the Christian countries. The man was robust, black as a bull, and of fine character. His formidable strength surpassed that of ten men. And the samurai Matsudare Iteda wrote in his diary that Yasuke was six shaku and two sun, meaning he was six feet two inches tall and his skin was like charcoal. One of the highest honors a visitor could receive would be the ability to dine with the leader, in this case, the great warlord Nabunaga, and Yasuke was given an invite to dine with him, and they talked quite a bit, becoming good friends. Yasuke loved to dance and perform utenzi, which is a historic form of Swahili narrative poetry which celebrates heroic deeds. This was a custom of Mozambique which leads people to believe that that is Yasuke's origin. Now he entertained Nobunaga with tales from Africa and India. On May 14, 1581, Yasuke departed Kyoto with Fra and the other Christians to the Eshizen province. There they met other local warlords during their journey and they arrived back in Kyoto on May 30th. Yasuke learned and trained with Nobunaga's great warriors and at some point Nobunaga bestowed the rank of samurai on Yasuke making him the first foreign-born samurai. Yasuke was given his own residence and a short ceremonial service by Nabunaga. Now Yasuke was assigned the duty of weapons bearer by Nabunaga as well. And he fought alongside the great warlord in important battles. He was part of Nabunaga's private guards and entourage which consisted of a small group of about 30 to 50 warriors. In 1582, Nabunaga sent his son Oda Nabutada to lead a battle against an enemy clan, the Takeda clan. Yasuke fought in this battle and they were very victorious in this battle. This battle was known as the Battle of Tenmokuzan Afterwards, Nabunaga led his forces, which included Yasuke, into the new territory that they had just taken from the Takeda clan to inspect the new territory. At this point, Nabunaga was close to accomplishing his mission of unifying Japan. Now, after viewing the new territory they had just conquered, Nabunaga and his entourage traveled back to Kyoto and stayed at the Hinoji Temple, which was common for him to do. He did it often. And his son, Oda Nobutada, was nearby at the Nijo Palace with his family. On June 2, 1582, 
Nobunaga's general, Akiche Mitsuhide, betrayed him. Mitsuhide entered the city with 13,000 troops under his command, and they surrounded the temple. His troops attacked Nobunaga and his small group and entourage. Nobunaga's warriors were no match for the 13,000 troops, as they consisted only of 30 to 50 men, which included Yasuke. Nobunaga and Yasuke both fought fiercely and bravely, but being outnumbered, they realized that they just did not stand a chance. The troops slaughtered most of Nobunaga's warriors during the initial ambush, but Nobunaga, Yasuke, and one of his loyal attendants named Mori Ranmaru escaped to one of the temple's chambers. Nobunaga said to Ranmaru, Ran, don't let them come in. These are believed to be his last words. And on his lord's orders, Ranmaru set fire to the temple, while Nobunaga performed seppuku, which is a ritual suicide that the samurai were to perform to maintain their honor. The process consisted of them performing the act of disemboweling themselves and then being beheaded by a trusted friend. Now, after Nobunaga committed suicide, Ranmaru beheaded him, and then Ranmaru asked Yasuke to do the same for him. Ranmaru then performed seppuku on himself, and Yasuke honored his request, and he beheaded him as well. Now, once Nobunaga and Ranmaru were dead, Yasuke escaped from the temple with Nobunaga's head. By doing this, he denies Mitsuhide from getting Nobunaga's head and displaying it. This would have established his power and legitimacy if he was able to do so. Yasuke then joined Nobunaga's eldest son, Oda Nobutada, at the Nijo Palace. Mitsuhide soon after attacked the palace. There was a Hindu priest named Maide Jenny who was present in the palace at the time of the attack, and Nobutada ordered him to take his infant son and flee. So the priest Maide Jenny escaped with Nobutada's son Samposhi, also known as Oda Hidenobu, and they fled to the Kiyosu castle in Owari. Now Yasuke and Oda stayed behind and they fought their attackers, but the numbers were just too great. And in the end, Oda performed seppuku on himself and Yasuke was captured. Yasuke was one of very few survivors of the coup and he was escorted to face Mitsuhide. Now at this point, the story varies. Some say that Mitsuhide um, insulted him and called him an animal and said that he wasn't worthy of death. But then there are the uh, writings that say that there is no evidence that that occurred. What we do know occurred that is documented is that Yasuke was escorted to a Jesuit mission by Mitsuhide's warriors. At this point, no further records exist of Yasuke so we don't know what happened to him in the rest of his life. And the reason for Mitsuhide's betrayal remains one of Japan's biggest historical mysteries. Mitsuhide was defeated soon after at the Battle of Yamazaki on July 2nd, 1582 by one of Nobunaga's retainers named Toyotomi Hideyoshi. Now Hideyoshi went on to successfully unify the entire country by 1590. The journey of the Japanese warrior began with Sakanoye, the first person given the title of Shogun. And then along came the samurai. And the first foreigner 
to enjoy the title of samurai was Yasuke, who rose quickly to become a very formidable warrior. And through the years, the samurai earned a reputation of being fast, brave, agile, and fearless, as well as calm, gentle, and full of wisdom. These two great warriors seem to have a lot of these qualities in common. But one of the main things they have in common is that they are both black men. And as the old Japanese proverb says, for a samurai to be brave, he must have a bit of black blood. As always, thank you for watching. And please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon.